the anointing of Esther. Today I'll be coming out of the book of Esther. I'll be skipping some chapters. I'm starting off from Esther chapter 4, starting from verse 13. Did Mordecai command to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And whose know it whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had command him. Chapter 5 verse 1. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal appear and stood in the inner courts of the king's house over against the king house and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand so Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter then the king said unto her what will thou queen Esther and what is thy request it shall be given thee to the half of the kingdom and Esther answered, If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther had said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? Even to half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Then Esther answered and said, My petition and my request is, If I have found favor in thy sight of the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king has said. Esther chapter 7. So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther, the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of the wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed, even to the half of the kingdom. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I had found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not contravail the king's damage. To understand the anointing of Esther, Esther anointing is not only about favor before the king. Esther anointing, one must realize the position she was in. Esther's ancestors has been forcibly taken from their homeland and brought into captivity to a foreign land. Esther was living as an orphan cared for by her cousin. During this time, the king was looking for a new queen and instructed his staff to search for the most attractive virgins of the land. Esther was one of those selected 
she had no choice. Esther spent one year undergoing beauty treatment, an entire year of rejecting her Jewish faith. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Mordecai pleaded with Esther to go before the king, to plead for mercy for the Jewish people. Both of them knew that going before the king without being summoned meant death. Esther called for a three-day fast without food and water. This was a fast to death. Three days without water is dangerous, but this was life and death for an entire people. This was a fast for favor before the kings, before the high court of the land. Esther went in with resolve. If I perish, I perish. Three days was also the time that Christ spent in the tomb. Three days of debt to defeat debt. Esther went before the king. He extended his favor of his scepter, sparing her life. The key to Esther anointing is for one to plead life before the courts of the heaven and earth. First, Esther made her plea before the courts of heaven through prayer and fasting. Second, she made a petition before the most powerful court of the earth. The favor of heaven rested upon Esther and she moved the king. The anointing of Esther is one of a power, authority, and favor. The favor of heaven that is then recognized by the power of this world. This favor is just not for anything. This favor is for the cry of life on behalf of God's people. Those who have no voice before the power of this world. Esther's is being raised up in this generation. She is going to be placed in position of influence where her voice can be heard. Arts and entertainment is one such place. There are many who will criticize Esther for going into those places. But it is God's will and he will give them a grace for purity. God will rise up Mordecai to launch Esther into her position and to intercede for her protection. The Esthers will carry out, the Esthers will cry out for life. They will cry out for freedom. They will cry out for mercy. They will cry out for those who have no voices. For the aborted babies, for the trafficking millions, and for the oppressive people. And they will cry out for God's people in the midst of prosecution. God is rising up Esthers. Let the anointing of favor fall upon those who will stand before the courts of heaven and earth. The favor that comes from bold obedience and courage. The favor that will rest upon those who fear no one but God. Call for such a time as this. You will minister out of the Esther anointing. It is one of wisdom, love, and compassion. You will touch many with my hands. I will work through you, and people shall receive of the Lord great blessing in their innermost being. They shall be released from their shackles and begin to flow with new life. The enemy seeks to stop you by throwing all of life's little irritation at you. Be on guard and vigilant in this hour. Do not be distracted with the little things, but see the bigger picture. See with my eyes my end time plan for those that I have placed in your sphere of influence. See with my eyes, but also hear with my ears the sound of the Lord. I am moving even though you do not yet see the full plan. Does one in battle reveals the battle plan too far ahead of time? No, they do not else the enemy would counteract their plans. In good time, my plans will be revealed. Now is the season to press into my presence and come deeper and hear what I am saying to you. Guard it in your heart and ponder my words, but keep them within you. You will see much, you will hear much. I reveal my plans to my servants, the prophet. Be diligent in intercession. Speak my words, for they are life when spoken in the spirit. They take on life and put on form, as does every word that you speak.
My word is alive, so study to be like your masters. Eat my words and taste them, for they are like honey to your soul. Heavenly mammon for the present day living. Do it once and eat it again, for it will bring sweetness to your soul. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I see your struggles, I see it all. This says the Lord.